please introduce yourself and tell us what out, outlet you're from. Uh, let's start with uh, Tyler over here. Thanks, Greg. Hey, Marcus. Tyler Donahue from Lions 24-7. Welcome to town. Thank you. Um, I, so much uh, track record at one place. Very rare in college football, but you had that at UVA. What made this opportunity the right move, the right time for you and your family? And can you kind of talk us through what that whirlwind experience was like as you made this decision? I think Charlottesville has been a place that um, has become home, and a lot of it is because of the people. Um, being able to sustain that opportunity to stay there for such a long period of time has, has been a blessing. Um, and a lot of things played into that as well. You know, there was a period of time where my wife was sick. She's a breast cancer survivor. Um, so the opportunity to leave wasn't available because we felt the best um, care for her uh, to recover from breast cancer was there in Charlottesville. Um, so a lot of factors have played behind the scenes. And now just having the opportunity to, to work for, for Coach Franklin and, and join Penn State uh, was a great opportunity that I, I couldn't turn down. It wasn't an easy decision, but couldn't turn down. Audrey Snyder, The Athletic. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you as well. Uh, Marcus, I, I just wanted to go back. James was telling us, of course, obviously, you and Anthony Poindexter have a very long history. Can you just kind of explain to us, describe to us what that relationship is like and how impactful and how helpful has Anthony been since you've been getting here and getting acclimated? I mean, my second year in college, he was my coach. So um, just to have the opportunity to, to play for him and um, in the UVA community, he's, he's He's admired. He's looked up to. He's probably one of the, the best players to ever play at UVA. And so just the, the respect that he has and the respect that um, and he garners every day is one of the reasons why my son's name is Christopher Dex. Um, that's a big part of, of who he is to, to me and my family. So the opportunity to reunite with him here is, is a big part of that. Hi, Marcus. John Sauber, Senate Daily Times. Nice to meet you. How, how much have you gone to evaluate the current wide receiver room, and how do you feel about the situation that you're currently walking into? Uh, just on the, the surface level right now, um, we had our first winter workouts today. Um, so getting the opportunity to watch the guys run around in person, you know, as opposed to from film, um, was a good help. So I think I have a, a good foundation of where the guys are and, you know, just building from there. But just having the opportunity to coach and be around them today for the first time was um was a good experience and I'm looking forward to building with those guys, but I like the guys that we have in the room. Yeah. Uh, Marcus uh, over here, uh, awesome. Daniel Gowan, mine's 24 seven. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Obviously you spent such a long time in Charlottesville, Virginia. What do you think is going to, to change in coming to state college recruiting for Penn state? And you know, what's this transition? Do you feel like, how do you feel like this transition is going to be for you? I missed the second part. Could you repeat the so second? How do you feel like this transition, you know, from being in Charlottesville for so long to being here, what do you think that transition is going to be like? I think it's going to be different. You know, obviously my, my family won't join me until the summer. So that's, you know, going into spring ball without having your family here for the first time. That's that's definitely part of transition. But also think change is good. It's a part of growth. Um, I think uh, be a new opportunity to, um, you know, be at a place where there's great people, uh, football is premium and just the opportunity to play in front of an amazing crowd. I'm, I'm looking forward to that. The atmosphere here is second to none. It's the best in the country. And so there's a lot of things transition wise that, um, that I'm looking forward to. It's going to be a little different, you know, for my family, but um, football is football. And once you get around great minds, like we have um, on this staff, it's just learning the terminology and coaching the kids to be the best. And that's what I'm looking forward to. Marcus Corey Geiger from DK Pittsburgh Sports. Can you explain the dynamic you had recruiting at Virginia? Were you a lead guy? Were you an organizer guy? The reason I mention this, you didn't have a lot of individual commits yourself. Mm -hmm. So just how did that dynamic go? What were your roles there? I think at different at a different place, it was it was more collective. So everybody just kind of did whatever we needed to do in order to get the best guys there. And so just, you know, essentially being a team player, whatever the recruit needed and um, just finding ways to get the guys that fit where we were. And then essentially it'll be the same thing here, um, you know, finding where I fit, how I can help and then doing a job, doing the best job of bringing the best guys in the country to come play receiver here. And that's that's the goal. Over here, Mark, Mark Brennan from Lions 247. Welcome to State College. Thank you. Welcome. Uh, a couple maybe off the wall questions. How did you come about getting your nickname, Biscuit, <laughs> and your relationship with AI? I know you're from the same area, but there's a few years apart there. How did you end up developing that relationship with, with, with that dude? The nickname, I, I can't tell you that. That's that's a long, that's a childhood story. I can't. <laughs> but I can tell you, um, 
AI is, is someone who who I grew up around. He's a few years older than me. We all played for the same rec league team, uh, started off at the same high school, and he's become a you know a big brother to me. And my my kids look up to him. He's always around them, always checking on them. So to have someone like that that arguably is one of the best players to ever play professional basketball, be from your neighborhood and, you know, to be a, a big supporter of mine, that means a lot. So I would say he's a really close friend. He's like a big brother and um, he does a really good job being the uncle to uh, my two boys as well. So. Up front, mm -hmm. here, Rich. I'm Marcus, uh, Rich right. Scarcella from the Reading Eagle. Pleasure to meet you. Pleasure to meet you too. Marcus, you went through a lot in December, obviously with the tragedy. And I was just wondering how, how are you able to move on from that? And are you looking at this as sort of a fresh start because of that tragedy? I, I think that would be insensitive to say a, a fresh start because there are three families that won't ever get that opportunity to have a fresh start. There's a part of them that, that won't ever come back. And so I don't know if you necessarily move on. Um, those, those three guys will always be a part of my life. Um, I have them tattooed on my arm, so I never forget them. And then their families will always be a part of my family. So that's, there's, there's three families that I love very deeply, and I, I don't know if move on is the right word because I'll never move on without them. So I think that the the place has changed. I'm in a different place, but those those families and those Lavelle, Deshaun, and Devin will always be a part of me. They'll always be a part of my heart, my life, and my family. So I don't know if fresh start is a, a fair thing to say. I think that would be a little insensitive and just always know they'll be a part of me. It's obvious, though, if I can follow up, how important relationships are to you I believe so because I, I feel like if not you're just like a supervisor if there's no relationships you're just overseeing a bunch of guys and telling them what to do I think the relationship piece is what makes it different that's very important to me if not then you know why are we doing it so to to know each and every player that I have the the opportunity to coach but who they are as a person, like what does their family mean to them? What are their goals? What do they aspire to be? So relationship is, is something that's very big to me. I would say as a coach, I'm very relationship driven and then I'm very demanding. And the only way I can be demanding is if I know exactly who I'm coaching and what they aspire to be and I can help them become that. It's gotta be a two-way street, not a one-way street. Let's go right here to John. Marcus, uh, Johnny McGonigal with Penn Live. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. <laughs> Following up on Rich's, um, Second question there. In terms of building those relationships and, and now you're getting into winter workouts and spring balls coming up, I mean, how excited, one, are you to start building those relationships? And how do you go about that when you enter a new room? You, you've known your Virginia guys for so long being down there. How do you approach that? How do you approach starting to build relationships with these guys? I think when you first step in the room, you set the expectations just so everyone knows exactly what we're expecting to, to get accomplished in this room and what we're going to be held accountable to. As you move past that, each day is an opportunity to grow and learn the guys that you're going to coach. And so spending time away from the facility is important. Um, spending time after hours is important. Just knowing that these guys are going to be the, the key part to us accomplishing our goals for this year. And, um, and the only way, like I said, I can get those guys to become their best is if I know exactly who they are. So spending time outside of football is important. As we encourage them to become the best football players, we want them to be great in the community. We want them to graduate and get a degree. And everyone that comes in that room as a receiver, we want them to be a first round draft pick. So all those things go hand in hand and getting to know them and who they are and spending time with them is very important. That way you know exactly who you coach and who you develop in a relationship with. And then and it becomes more than just football. It becomes something that's, that's, that's going to last a lifetime. Football is going to be a small window of what we do, but hopefully the, the relationships are impactful enough where I get to go to weddings. I get to, you know, see kids be born, see, um, you know, families grow and, you know, young men find the opportunity to provide a living. I think that we started off as, you know, being a part of the same uh, university playing at UVA, but he became my coach and then he became so much more than that. And um, just to, to have an opportunity to to play for someone who, you know, is, is a UVA legend at the time at UVA and to see how much he cared for me, like off the field, um, kind of um, meant a lot. And so just learning from that example and, you know, ironically, my career has kind of follow, followed the same path as his. And I just think that, you know, when you have such um, a great example in front of you to follow, why not? You know, he's one of the best to ever do it. And um, he means a lot to me and my family. And it's important that, um, you know, he knows that. So I'm very thankful for that that example that he set. And hopefully those things continue to carry on in that path of progressing to get better each day and each year. In the back, Ellie. 
I'm grateful to hear your wife is a survivor. Thank you for sharing that. Thank you. Um, my name is Ali. I work for ABC 27 and Nittany Nation. We cover the state for a bunch of different stations. Um, when you're coming into a new role and you have to attack not only um, the recruiting side of the business, but also the transfer portal, like where do you fall on that? Do you lean one way more towards the other? Some guys hate the portal, some guys love it. Kind of what's your philosophy there? I think it's based on necessity. I think the, the most important part is always our locker room, making sure our guys uh, know that they're the priority and we do everything to give them the best opportunity to um, succeed and grow and, and help us win. And you know, with the with the portal, it just depends on necessity. If there's a you know a, a roster spot that we need, then we have to look in that area because it helps um, our team become better. And that's what we're essentially doing, trying to put the best roster together so we have an opportunity to compete for national championships. I think that it doesn't mean we live in the portal; it just means that we we recognize it. And when opportunities present those themselves, we just have to acknowledge it and see if it fits. And if it does, we'll make the addition. If not, then we'll stick with what we have. But I think it's the portal is kind of based out of necessity would be my example, or my advice. How do players stand out to you that's already in the room? Like maybe a guy we didn't see last season, how does he stand out? I think, but right now, just the consistency. And you can kind of see guys as they move around the facilities and then having the first opportunity to watch the guys work today. That, that tells you everything you need to know. Like who's going who's gonna to be tough? Who's going to um, show up and be first? Who's going to be last? Who's going to compete? Even if they don't win, do they give you everything that they have? And so just within that, that time frame of watching guys work out, it, it nullifies about 12 hours worth of conversation because you get the truth right there when things get tough. And so um, continuing to build those guys and, and build relationships with them, but just having an the opportunity to work out with them, watch them work out today was, was fun. In the middle. Mm -hmm. Abby Schnabel, Pittsburgh Post-Gazette. Uh, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you as well. Coach, um, who has really stood out to you? I know you talked about initial impressions and you just talked about seeing them and I know it's early, but has there been an individual or two or three that have really stood out to you as you guys, you've getting started? I think it's been, um, it's kind of been a mix of guys, you know, because we really haven't um, been in front of them consistently. You know, when I first got here, I went straight on the road, and then we really haven't had workouts until today. So just having the opportunity today kind of gave me an opportunity to see, you know, guys work out. And um, some guys are a little bit ahead of others as far as conditioning and, and where they are. We got to get everybody caught up to speed. And then we just got to find a way to continue to win reps and one-on-one, -on -one, continue to, to win. That's got to be a big part of, of who we are as a group. And as Coach mentioned, like, this group has to take another step for us to accomplish the goals that we want to um, as far as competing for national championships. And that's, that's the task at hand, and that's what we're going to focus on each day. We got time for a few more. We'll go to Audrey. Marcus, Audrey Snyder again. Um, it, coaching changes often happen really quickly. Sometimes they can get drug out, though. Do you remember at what point you and James first kind of made contact? Have you guys known each other from over the years? Um, and how did that process kind of unfold? Did it happen quickly? I mean, <laughs> I'd be lying if I said it did. Like, when you're in the midst of it, it seems like it takes forever. Um, Coach Franklin is someone I've known over the years, um, had a lot of respect for from afar. And... Um, you know, once he reached out to, to Coach Elliott, I honestly, I can't tell you how fast or how, how it just seemed like it took like a long time. And so um, when you're in the midst of it, there's a lot of moving parts of what could be or, you know, what ultimately becomes. But more than anything, I'm just grateful to be here and um, grateful that um, Coach has the ability um, to believe in me. And um, I'm grateful to be here. Go ahead, Zach. Hey, Marcus, it's great to meet you. Nice to meet you as well. I'm Zach Allen. I write for the Daily Collegian. You talked about um, eventually going to weddings and watching kids being born down the line. What are some of the early stepping stones that you have to do or maybe have already started to do to kind of get to that point? I think the first thing is you got to be vulnerable. Like, you got to be willing to give those guys your troops, like who you are, where you come from, and not just speak from, you know, the vantage point of, of having done it all correctly, like be open to the mistakes that I've made. And then just really not so much talking, like listening. Like I need to listen to those guys. I need to hear who they are. A lot of times you can kind of, you know, stunt the, 
the progress of developing relationships based upon talking too much. So a lot of times just listening to those guys, giving them a voice to tell me who they are. And then as we continue to grow, see if that aligns with how they work, how they go to class, who they are, you know, in practice and who they are in the game and just helping them grow constantly. I think that's those are the initial steps. But I would say listening more than talking and then talking and giving the truth when they ask questions that relate to, to me in, in particular. Time for two more. Joe. Hi, Marcus. Uh, Joe Smeltzer, Nittany Sports Now. Pleasure to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. So what have your impressions been of Malik McLean, both from what you've seen on film and in the time you've gotten to know him personally? I mean, one thing you notice about Malik is <laughs> he loves to smile. He's always in, um, in a good mood. Uh, he brings a, a, a really good personality to the group. And I think he's eager to, to learn and, and want to show and prove and work. So I think he's a great addition to the group. Um, he's kind of you know, come in and just kind of ask, like, how can I get to work? What can I do? What can I learn? And to see him work today was a really cool thing. So I'm really excited for, for him. And if he can continue to be that consistently, I think we'll make our group a lot better and um, give us an opportunity to have more depth and more, more talent and, and more toughness in our room. So I'm excited for that. Last question, Neil. Hey, Marcus. Neil Rudell from the Out to the Mirror. Pleasure uh, to welcome meet you. you too. Uh, just curious how much NIL dominates recruiting? Do you have to have immediate answers? Uh, what are the families uh, asking about NIL and uh, how do you guys handle that? I think it's, it's a player to player uh, basis. Um, everybody doesn't warrant an NIL deal. And some of the, the NI, NIL deals that may be too outlandish might not fit or align the, the, the values and core beliefs in our program. So just making sure that NIL is a real thing and we understand that and we acknowledge it, but making sure the guys fit within our program um, so it doesn't become something that eats us from the inside out. But um, it's a very live and well thing. I think you just have to adhere to it on a case-to-case -case or player-to-player -player basis and just making sure it's, it's not something that's going to eat our program from the inside out. All right, thank you very much, Marcus. Um, and then we're going to have the freshmen available upstairs starting at 1.30. Uh, there's rosters um, of the entire class, so you know their jersey number. They'll be wearing their jerseys, so you could grab a roster. Um, just enter through the locker room doors here and head on up. Thanks. Thank you.